Hey guys, so it's time for a morning vlog. Um, I was thinking of a few things, and so I want to kind of illuminate on some ideas, shed some light on a couple of things that I'm going to be doing in the future, and kind of this bounces off of the last video that I made for CS, uh, the CS uh, spotlight, the, C the CT spotlight, sorry, number four, with existing get right. Um, one of the things in that video. I'm going to be just talking briefly about a few things in that video. One of the things in that video, um, I didn't have a huge amount of time to explain a lot of things, and there's definitely a lot that I missed, because I tried to do a very, very fast format, where I would just get, okay, this is the obvious thing that's happening here, we're not going to go too deep into the risks and rewards, and you know, quantifying the value of different different things, and so on and so forth, of how we make the decisions to go really deep into it. I instead wanted to just kind of provide more of a, a basic glimpse on everything and I think that it worked pretty well because it does leave room um, for let's say an expansion on some of the the ideas so for example one of those ideas was um, I used the term like, like levels um, when we're defending on the CT side on the a bomb site and this is a really interesting concept I've maybe levels is not the best the best way to describe it, the best word to use. But really what I mean there, if you were a bit baffled by by my use of that word, because I didn't have time to really elaborate upon it, is that you always want to be able to make trades. And to do that, you kind of always have to be on the same kind of, or you can always do it like a level, like a, if you draw like a uh, like a little line between um, where the most outside defense is, then, and, and the CT defense, if you look at it on Inferno, it kind of has, uh, it is kind of layered. You have, let's say, a more aggressive um, hold you can have where you've got you know a guy in apartments just supporting each other in apartments you've got um, a guy on arch who's actually quite who's actually pushed quite far who can actually peek into mid quite quickly if he needs to and then there's like a level back where then you know one guy goes from apartments um for, or balcony area down to down to quad and then because he's down to quad the guy who is on arch he can't be pushed up to a quick mid peak because if he if he peaks and dies his teammate is too far away to trade the kill or make you know use of that peak so then that means that the arch guy has to play on an angle further back and it means that um the the guy who's you know in pit and doing apartments like uh, dedicated he can't be pushed really far up because he's not going to get support so he has to Basically, the first place up he can be is, is well, I mean, there is always a surprise of bedroom, but in reality, you want him to be, you know, right next to pit, but still on that balcony on the exit of apartments. And so then, then there's the, the deepest level where you've got the guy on quad who usually goes to either the graveyard or site, and you have the guy from arch who usually goes to CT arch or he goes to library, and then you have the, the guy who from apartments going to pit and you can see that you know with with these this layered response that's um there are there is multiple things going on there so for example with this layered response it allows you to of course gain information if you're able to start with a more aggressive the kind of most outside the most uh the most map control let's say um so so you have the guys you know pushed on apartments pushed on mid pushed on on, on those areas that gives you a lot of info it's a little bit risky but also, what it does is it, it kind of forces you to um, bring some nades out from the terrorist side. So if you imagine that you just played the super deep, the, like really, really deep, um, so you've got like a guy's side, a guy pit, and guy library, or you know something similar, and that is that is really deep. You can't go further, further back for the defense than that. Then the problem you have is that they have all their nades, and unless you have perfect counter nades, which is going to be incredibly hard, um, hard to ask for, they're just going to wreck you as they push into the site with their nades. You, you, I mean, they haven't even maybe even taken any losses. You haven't gotten any picks. You haven't gotten any f information. And because of, you don't have any information, your your guys on banana, it is a complete guess whether or not they rotate or not, or whether or not a player floats back or not. Um, the T's can just be quiet and then boom rush and then there's no response time and the response time is really you know the, the most it it can possibly be because you were not, were not able to deliver any information to the guys at banana okay sure you can argue that if you're playing very defensive defensively on a that they can play aggressively on banana but that's a consideration you have to understand you have to understand when you're giving up information and playing blind and tr and that's you know maybe one way to if you're if you're forced into that position the one way to kind of counter it by making sure that the guys on banana are, are peaking a bit more so that they can at least you know eliminate one of the the immediate options so this this is kind of the idea here so it is a layered defense and 
and perhaps um, layering is a is a better word. I don't know. Um, of course, this doesn't apply to every single map. There, are, but I think on uh, Inferno, I think it's a very good way to elaborate this this one concept and really bring it out. It's quite obvious. Um, so so yeah, that's one thing I wanted to briefly talk about. Um, and that actually goes into the second thing I want to talk about. And these are all things I actually want to make you know dedicated videos for. But the the other thing was. Um, kind of in matchmaking, if you're playing with complete unknowns, or whenever you're playing in the competitors of setting with complete unknowns, um, if you have an understanding of this stuff and also your teammates as well, then you can have this natural team play where, I mean, this is what good players do. If you, if you play on, let's say, Global Elite or whatever, even if these players can't explain to you any of these concepts, they understand what the most optimal and most successful plays to make defensively usually usually are, unless they're just, you know, loose cannons then then they should understand that um inherently from their experience from getting to that level but that's not always the case so so yeah definitely um if you have this in mind you need to always be looking at the radar because there's so many times i've played matchmaking and you have teams where you know maybe maybe someone's not really even calling but the thing is is that you need to play reactively with your teammates so if you've got a teammate pushing somewhere you can't be really far back Let, let's say you're on mirage or something and you're kind of doing um like an a push or something or a slow a push you can't have one guy who's like really pushed on slope and the guy in apartments is really far back um or you know someone needs to take initiative and then you need to have the trust that people are looking at the radar so that they can react even if there's no calls on comms or anything the radar is a very very useful tool to actually understand what your opponent your rather sorry your teammates are trying to uh, trying to do so use the radar is a really big thing and it's it's a, a frustration to no end for me because i get in so many situations where i i i react or, or try to make a play or initiate because so many times people in matchmaking they don't initiate anything uh, because they're just scared and they hide back when they're on a terrorist side um and especially on maps okay well i, I won't get into the the full full brunt of the rants but but um definitely this is something again that i'll try to make a video on in the future so, so we can have a more more in-depth look at it and maybe get the most kind of learning potential out of out of it in the future um another thing i missed in the video actually um, and I actually saw this the first time around and someone brought this up in the comments was I actually called and there's kind of two mistakes here for me so when get right got a got an aggressive pick on banana um, he killed someone on uh, on just by the car crouching there Freiburg pot flashed over get right was able to grab the kill um, I uh, then then the smoke was thrown down and by get right and he instead of like running back he actually repeeked and you know I call this you know maybe this is a mistake getting greedy there's a Quite a, there's actually a few ways to look at it. Definitely, um, the, the guy who brought it up in the comments, he said, okay, um, because the grenade just came out, um, the usual reaction from the other guys is is of passivity because usually when grenades are being thrown, you're not expecting the kind of uh, opposite intention. And on a high level, of course, this is the the psychology they're going to play to. It's like if you if you throw, a, for example, if you throw a flash out, and this actually was a very uh, I don't think this is really used as much. I mean, you can kind of use it with the underhand flashes, but it's, I think it was much more effective in 1.6. You could throw um, flashes out, but you throw them in the way that it's like behind you. So anyone who play 1.6, the kind of flashes I'm talking about is, let's say on Dust2, you're rushing Catwalk, and on the big, big crate on Catwalk, you could throw a flash right on the top there, and it would flash everyone like towards the CT, kind of the site of, of Catwalk. But if you're even in front of it, you know, you don't get flashed. So you can run in despite throwing a flash so technically you're almost flashing yourself but doing it in a way so you don't get flashed so you're sending the signal you that to, to, to them that they that you're not going to run and rush them you know immediately and that they can go back a little bit when in reality you're saying i'm willing to get blind with you to to get position or to get the kill obviously the tricks where you don't get flashed yourself are the best because then you and you can destroy them but that is a similar kind of thing going on there where where you know you know i think it was the smoke was going down and that's going to indicate defensive play from the CTs. So get right kind of did the will try to do the unexpected and got caught. So so there is definitely a lot of merit to that. But I feel like you know after we got just got the 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 the, the quick one frag. I mean personally, I wouldn't have gone for that because already there's like a victory there and already they have an advantage. And by doing doing taking that risk, you you risk sure you know winning the round um, by by having a very very good situation. 
but I think there there's actually a bigger risk um, involved where if you die like that, then you get a much worse situation and you, you already had a good winning situation after the first kill. So it's one of those things, you know, um, you can't say that it's necessarily a, a big mistake. It's a risk. It's a risk that Get Right decided that he, he wanted to take, that he felt good about. So that's what it is about on the top levels, about taking risks and analyzing um, how effective a, a risk is going to be. And right, so uh, the next thing was, this is also a bit of a matchmaking thing and another thing I wanted to make uh, make another video on. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's not necessarily like how to f uh, throw smokes and flashes, but more or less why. Like, what is the purpose of a smoke and a flash? Because, again, there's been a lot of... Because, um, actually, this is really awesome, right? So, there's been all these guys and videos about how, where to, you know, how to play smokes here, how to how to do all this, these cool flashes and everything. And so, I mean... And, and so many times when I've been playing matchmaking, I've seen, you know, these guys just throwing these, like, crazy smokes. Like, well, not crazy smokes, but, like, really, really precise smokes, let's say, on Mirage <clears throat> from T-Spawn, throwing the smokes that kind of smoke out the, um, the kind of... Uh, the, the, the peak, or, or rather, how, how to actually call it, um, the, the place the T's first appear when they come into middle from T-spawn. I'm smoking that off so you can get behind the, the boxes um, on mid so you don't get orped. And he was throwing that like almost every single round. He was throwing it on rounds even when it was like we were on an anti-eco. So the whole point of an anti-eco is that, all right, the range is our friend. And what he's doing there effectively is completely smoking us off there. So if we are to go middle, then and they rush middle, we get like they get the best possible scenario because they get close range fights when we want really really long range fights for the most efficient situation, uh, you know, or situations where um, they don't have the money to buy an AWP. He's smoking off the like a really good angle for for an AWPA. So and that gives them an advantage on getting information on mid. So there's like the, like this most of the smokes he was throwing okay they were great smokes but he had no idea when to use them so you got to ask yourself what is the purpose of, uh, purpose of the smokes and this also goes extends into when a smoke is thrown what is the smoke what was the point of throwing the smoke and what are you supposed to use it for because again matchmaking because there's such a huge round time people tend to just wait like way too long and and the idea with a smoke is it blocks off an angle so that allows you to uh, well, either if you're a CT player defensively to try to delay uh, rush, try to delay peaks, try to offset timings, which is very powerful. And we see that used a lot, and it should be. So that's all normal. But more or less on the on the T side, smokes should carry urgency. When a smoke goes down, let's say again, let's use Mirage as the example. If smoke a smoke goes down in connector, the CTs cannot see through connector during that time, or you know. Let's say it's it's uh it's the balcony. They can't see through that. So you need to use that. You need to comp like your entire team needs to, needs to understand that even if you're all unknown to each other, okay, the smokes are down. That means we have to actually just you know th we have the best chances of taking this these positions by by just rushing now because they have less angles. They have less players looking at our positions. So we have a, more of an advantage, or we get the best possible chance to try to make some ground. And that's one of the reasons why. On Mirage, at least, and I think, and, and something. This is actually another topic of a video. I want to do videos which kind of explain like the basic, th like the basic strategies and basic theories of how to play um, these maps, even if you're playing with some randoms, so that you can make very simple calls that can be effective. Um, so that's another goal for another future video. Just uh, throwing out a lot of teasers here. Um, so yeah, so the smokes. Uh, as a T side, they carry urgency a lot of the time. You can actually use them defensively. There, of course, there's a, a good example of this. Let's say on Inferno, um, you can, you, for example, some some uh, CT teams want to get really aggressive on Banana to take a lot of map control. And smokes smokes are, are often about this too. De denying map control is another way to think about it. So on Banana, having let's say the push all the way to logs, what you'll find is CT is actually pushing to logs, then kind of smoking themselves off because they're stopping the the terrorists aggressively pushing into that position. And all of a sudden now, having logs gives them so much information, so much, uh, such a quick rotation time to weigh. It, it is such a money spot. They don't need to go and frag so long as they hold that really awesome position. So they'll keep re-smoking it. And then if you look at um, any situation like this, look at the minimap, look how constricted the terrorist team are. Um, it gives the CTs so much so much power it is very powerful to do that so that's another position where it's used defensively kind of 
and then defensively to to hold a position. So that's another amazing use of a smoke. But um, so so yeah, um, lost my train of thought there. But either way, I'm, I mean, this is the same same concept with flashes and everything. Um, for example, there are a lot of situations where you shouldn't flash. This um, and and this is um also timing a timing thing. So let's say you're on dust two and you have a really really good spawn for long. Okay, on, you're on you're on the terrorist side. You have a great spawn for long. It's a it's a gun round for both teams. You're you're going to go for that pick. You get to the door. You get you get to the angle before the CT does. I, I think I'm I'm pretty I'm like 100% sure that you'll always get to the angle. Um, even against the best CT spawn, if you have the best T spawn. So if you get the best T spawn, you're going to want to pick that angle a lot of the time. It can be a good option at least. And so many times, let's say I've been doing that, and I'm running there. And the guy throws a flash over behind me, and what that does is it prevents me from picking because, and I, and I can't use my timing because the guy doesn't understand that. Um, basically, I don't want to flash him. I'm going for a pick. Let's. It's a different situation if your entire team is trying to gain position in long, and you're rushing together with two or three. Then it makes sense because then you you're guaranteeing yourself getting through the angle and onto that position of long without having to make the pick, which is a more sure thing against um, the situation I was playing where it's like we're spreading out for map control, trying to get picks, and I don't want someone flashing over there because then the guy is going to get flashed and he's not going to go on the angle, so I don't get my pick attempt. So there's all these these ideas about flashing. Flashing is to remove people from positions. It's to push positions. It's to You can use it for a lot of other things as well, of course, but these are things that need to be understood so that you can make... Um, good place and these are very simple questions you've got to ask yourself what is this actually doing um but yeah i think this has been actually a much longer video than i thought it would be it's been 17 minutes what the hell have i been talking about um so i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it off right now and um to any of you cs players i guess i've got gained some new cs uh, subs i hope you enjoyed this morning uh, vlog let me know what you think and these are again some of the kind of videos and the topics i'll be touching on uh, in like properly in the future but i just wanted to kind of get it off my chest for now and to all the quakers who sat through this i'm pretty impressed i'm pretty impressed um i'll be streaming today so you'll get your your action so, so there's no worries there but yeah thanks for watching guys and uh i'll see you next time